This is the Coin Market Cap Update with your host, Crypto Keith. We'll see which coins are leading and which coins are falling behind, which coins are good to buy and which coins are good to sell. So stay tuned for another interesting episode. Hey guys, Crypto Living here. We're looking at the crypto market cap. We're going to see what things look like today. So we have our top five here in market caps. We have um, our top coins for price are Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Dash, and then BitConnect. BitConnect did just move well, move down the list in crypto and market cap. Where is BitConnect here? Come on, BitConnect. There it is. So it's down here. It's number 15. And the reason it moved down is because it um, it was hard to figure out exactly how many BitConnect were, were in existence because the exchange would sell you BitConnect coin and then you'd lend it back to them. So then they'd have the BitConnect coin a second time, which they could then go sell if they wanted to. So then they could technically sell these coins twice or um, make it seem like there's more in existence than there actually is because you're loaning your coins back. So this was corrected. Um, it went on the HitBTC exchange. And um, now there's two exchanges to pull numbers from, and uh, there's more data. So I guess something happened, and they figured out how to pinpoint the amount of coins. So that's why BitConnect moved down, why it moved down on the list. Yeah, so that's that. Monero is uh, almost $100. That's interesting. Bitcoin Cash, doing well, doing well. Ethereum, it might be a good time to sell your Ethereum now if you were planning on selling it. I know I was going to sell some Ethereum, but I was waiting for it to pass 300 again. Uh, same with Dash, I don't think I would sell it anything less than 300. Neo, we're waiting to get back up to $30. It's been... It's been uh, $36. It has been a lot higher than that, but um, a lot of these altcoins are going down. Ethereum Classics up to 15 again. Hasn't been there for a while. But a lot of these altcoins were going down. Today is an update. Like Omisi Go. I bought some, a bunch of Omisi Go at $7, $8. And, um, and I've lost money on it. I thought that would be a, a good buy i thought it would be a quick return but uh, a lot of things have slowed down in the altcoin uh, markets so things are at a halt and uh, there's not much movement going on although today some things are doing well there's lots of green so for top changes top change we have atm chain so let's check out atm chain a little bit and then we have Verge, Monero, Bitcoin, Dark, and Zencash. We also have VeChain, Adex, and Komodo. So we have Populous down there too. So we're going to look at ATM Chain. We're also going to look at, uh, we already looked at, did we look at Smart Cash? I think we did. Let's look at MCAP. Looks new. Looks interesting. So there's coins and tokens here on the crypto market cap. Let's see which ones are. Let's see the difference here between tokens and coins. So tokens would be tokens for a company. Um, so it, the company does not need the coins to exist, but the coins help fund the company, and then they're kind of like securities. 
coins are actual currencies that can be used to transfer value and uh, you can buy and sell things with coins so we have these are all coins they're uh, they are all currencies so that's the difference there between tokens and coins I guess we'll do a little bit of research another day and find out specifically what are the traits of a token what are the traits of a coin but that's an interesting thing to know uh, know about that there are tokens and coins so let's go over to our two coins over here. Let's look into ATM chain a little bit. So it's worth under, uh, it's worth about three cents right now. And if you look at the chart here, it has had some uh, pumps here, but not too high. And so this coin, ATM chain, still hasn't had some huge pumps so it, it still may have um, some potential in it even if it was just a pump and dump coin it still hasn't had that pump uh, or if it's a real uh, real useful coin that will be here long into the future we'll find out now um, what it looks like ATM chain obviously it's a Asian company we've got all this um, Asian letters here and we can't really read it very much so there's lots of uh, Asian people on the board at least with a company like Amisigo they're trying to sell to the whole world they are an Asian based company but they actually have a lot of uh, they have English letters on their website see we are we in the English now we can go into the English section it's a uh, default Chinese or some sort of Asian letters so here's um, English so we can understand a little bit better create the world's leading decentralized digitized smart media platform the first Sino French cross-border e-commerce submit was successfully held at ATM chain Blockchain network, the entire business ecology also includes advertising platform, media screen, and other facilities, as well as advertising users, advertising publishers, user site providers, digital currency exchanges, and other roles. Under the background of global economics of attention, ATM chain takes an incentive measures to ensure the perfect operation of the entire system. So here we have a diagram. We have a... Uh, Advertising user, delivery advertising on the advertiser platform that goes to the end user. Um, they're also paying money to the site provider. Distributed uh, ad rewards. So advertising platforms um, distribute rewards to, to all the sites they, they, are, um, they have their ads on. Advertising platforms also give rewards to the end user. Okay, so um, you're being paid to view the ads as well, which is what need what's needed out there on the internet. Something needs to change because everywhere you look, there's advertisements, advertisements, and they're everywhere. And you are not benefiting from these ads being in front of your face, but many other people are. So they're destroying the internet. They're they're making the internet ugly for everybody else just so they could make money. So there either needs to be a new internet without ads or end users need to be paid for viewing ads. So that's a little bit about uh, ATM chain. They have here their advertising contract based on Decent advertising subsystem qr code management wallet subsystem support atm token transaction closed loop of tokens transfer uh, milestone two is advertising subsystem integration with physical media screen third party data privacy protection ai analysis mo module 
advanced research for IoT data. Milestone 3 supports Raiden Network, uh, medium news and aggregation, self media creation, ATM token reward system, integration with audio, video, various IoT sensors. Self developed public blockchain of ATM chain. Um, more subsystems such as ticketing subsystems, social networking subsystems, support more business scenarios. So that's a little bit about their milestones. Not really a roadmap because it's what they've done in the past, not what they're going to do in the future. Um, so let's see here. We got some partners, the Enterprise, Ethereum Alliance, R Fintech, Hyperledger, Zane Group. Uh, whatever that's called, OJSCRTI, Swisscom, Consensus, and HipBTC. New Center, create the world's leading decentralized, digitized smart media platform. So it's not very relevant to us. It's good to know about these tokens, though, when they're out there and what they do just in case they come on your exchange or you see people hear people talking about them now you know a little bit more about ATM chain now going to MCAP it was on the our top for losses so it had the most um, loss overnight it's here in the red so if we go to ATM chain what exchanges is it currently on these are the ones. HitBTC is the main one. So going over to MCAP, it's on uh, some exchanges here, some similar exchanges. Who knows, we might get lucky and this might be another Asian coin. MCAP token is an initiative of MCAP Labs and uses the ERC20 protocol for peer-to-peer -peer transactions. So here's a picture saying it's going to go up. We must, we might as well invest because it says here it's going to go up in value, right? We're not that don't easily you wish fooled. you would invest in Bitcoin when you first heard of it? I certainly do. Just a couple of years ago, you could have bought it for less than two hundred dollars per coin. Now it is approaching three thousand dollars and shows no signs of slowing down. What about Ether? In January 2017, you could have bought it at $9 per coin. It is near $400 now. Knowing which altcoin to invest in takes a lot of experience, research and know-how. Fortunately, there are other ways to cash in on the rapidly growing cryptocurrency market. MCAP One token to rule them all. With MCAP, you can make money from all crypto coins at once. MCAP's algorithm analyzes over 30 parameters of various altcoins and calculates which one would be the most profitable to mine at any given moment. So you can invest in a single coin and reap the benefits of investing into hundreds of the most promising ones. Our advice is not only hold on to your MCAP tokens, but wait for the moment when others will start selling them. This will temporarily bring the price down, and this is when you, and most certainly me, can buy even more of them at a better price. Various estimates show that MCAP may be reaching as high as $100 per token by May 2018. If you take a look at the changes in BTC or ETH prices, this seems not only possible, but inevitable. MCAP. One token to rule them all. Well, it's a good marketing uh, initiative. A lot of tokens are marketing towards uh, the fact that people regret not investing in Bitcoin. And they're playing off that. Um, really, they shouldn't have to do all this marketing if they were a good token, though. All I see is marketing so far. And usually that's a good sign 
when you're uh, looking at tokens and ICOs, the more uh, visual appeal, visually appealing um, it is, you know, a lot of the money's been put into selling you something and not actually put into the product itself. So you don't want to uh, you don't, don't want to be tricked by nice looks. Although a company can have sound uh, software and structure and then also have nice looks. You just can't uh, be fooled by the nice looks and think that's all the company is. Kind of like the the ETH, uh, ETH Connect white paper. Yeah, it's very visually pleasing, but a white paper is supposed to be white, not a bunch of pictures. It's supposed to be a blank paper with words explaining. But they realize they've got to move into the mainstream and sell sell non-technical people something. It's June 25th. Where the hell did this come from? Oh, ICOs. Yeah, BitJob was a, an interesting project, but we don't need to look at that right now. So, MCAP mines, from what I understand, MCAP mines tokens and then they 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 sold their token representing the tokens the money that they're making off of the tokens they mine so they're mining the most profitable tokens you're buying mcap token to get some of the profits of mining these tokens but not actually having to do the work yourself so it is an interesting uh model i don't like a lot of the the models run nowadays like genesis mining and cloud mining where you're putting all your money together into something and you don't necessarily uh have to be buying mining power at all they just need to be giving you a percentage uh payout they're actually you can just get a template to make it look like you're selling mining contracts and not actually have this the hardware set up so uh, I know this this can be done in the same type of way, but I don't know. I, I like this seems this seems like uh, an interesting investment. I would have to look into it a little bit more uh, before I did invest in it, but it looks interesting. Hopefully, it'll come on to some of the other exchanges, and that'll be more confirmation that it is a good token. So that's NCAP. It's a uh, it's a dollar twenty five right now. Now I want to just end with some news here, some interesting news from CoinDesk. The Vatican address to highlight Bitcoin use in slave trade. Oh, what a surprise! First it was terrorism, then it's money laundering. Now it's the slave trade that. Uh, they're blaming Bitcoin for. <laughs> Bitcoin did not make the slave trade worse. The slave trade is a problem of its own, separate from Bitcoin. You cannot start mixing the two. And if anything, they're saying here in the article that because uh, Bitcoin is not easily tracked, that People uh, that do human trafficking are now using it to track traffic uh, victims. But this is playing off the mass uh, masses' minds and, and manipulating their minds. Because really, if you think about it, logically, cash is the number one thing used for illegal activities. Cash does not necessarily have to be traced. But a digital currency that has uh, a digital fingerprint that it leaves everywhere it goes. And that is uh, all, all data is kept on a public ledger. And you can see exactly what happened with transactions. This is not what people are going to be using for human trafficking. 
It's just not. It makes no sense. Yes, people on the dark web um, have certain techniques to make themselves more anonymous, but the general Bitcoin community, 99.9999% of it, does not use it for illegal activities. Or at least not for human trafficking. So that links, uh, one of the references for that article is Banks turn to Bitcoin trafficking, tracking, and fight against human trafficking. So saying, following pressure from Illinois law enforcement, Visa and MasterCard ceased doing business with Backpage, an online classified ad service that has been accused of being a thinly veiled front for prostitution and human trafficking. So a couple of interesting things about the Vatican. The taxpayers uh, that live in Italy have to pay a certain percentage of their income to the Vatican. They are uh, ordered by law to do this. The Vatican had over 1.1 billion off its balance sheet. So the Vatican is hiding money or creating money that wasn't there before. I wonder where they got that. The Vatican will now have to pay the property taxes avoided for seven years. Although it probably won't. This is probably just for the public eye to see. But the, the Vatican does not pay taxes or property taxes. They take everyone's money, but they don't give anything away. When we see the Vatican trying to address this uh, Bitcoin use in slave trade, maybe it's because they don't get taxes when people are using Bitcoin and it's not being tracked. Maybe they're using uh, the slave trade because they know it pulls on people's heartstrings and that something, uh, nothing can be done about something unless another, enough people are uh, angry about it. And maybe they're trying to get people angry so that they can regulate and restrict Bitcoin access and as well as doing that, track everybody's Bitcoin so that they can get their percentage of it as well. Because they don't own any Bitcoin right now and they probably have their eyes on it and they probably want it badly. So these are some greedy, greedy people and they are used to taking money from everybody. So you have to be careful and you have to look into why these people are saying things. What's their motive? What's their motivation? I'm not saying for sure that's the reason, but that's what it looks like to me. So I'm Crypto Keith. We'll catch you tomorrow with our Crypto Market Cap Review.